can say what he feels and no decision will be taken without um, not really everyone agreeing but at least no one feeling uh, a decision is being taken that they cannot live with. So to do this we have a couple of rules for how to have this debate and it's really simple um, but it's important to keep in mind because it will help have a smooth discussion. When you feel like you want to say something and it's a new point or a uh, uh, something you want to say that will take longer than 10 seconds, this is the rule, you just raise your hand. If you want to say something really short, a reaction that is no more than 10 seconds, you make the sign of short point. When you want to say uh, a more like technical stuff, for instance, when someone is using a term and you don't understand what it's about, when people keep talking about the GA and you're thinking like, what the hell is a GA? you make the sign technical point. Um, and for uh, the last rule, we have ways to measure if people agree or disagree. We call it a temperature check. When, some, when you agree with what someone says, don't clap, don't say woo, because uh, it, it makes noise and you cannot discuss. Instead, do this. <coughs> Uh, and if your temperature is more low, you're not really sure if you agree or not, you have some doubts, you go. <laughs> and if you really feel like you disagree, you take it more down low. So this is really easy. And there's a technical point already, Rudolf. <laughs> we haven't used that one much, which I think is a good thing. So if someone is behaving like an asshole, which no one will, so we won't use it, but it's just... <laughs> Thank you. Um, for now, for some more practical information. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me without the microphone? Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, all for coming on such short notice uh, and help keep this uh, momentum. Um, uh, and special thanks to those who helped put this together, students and Marcus, who's at home sick, uh, and Dan and Claire uh, uh, in, in particular. We have a Twitter hashtag. This is the first time I ever say something like that. <laughs> so this is a full of new experiences, I'm sure, for everyone. Uh, we have a hashtag, Rethink Uva. Um, if you're tweeting, tweeting, if you're uh, 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 encouraging people to follow, this is what we are trying to, to, uh, uh, to trend, but of course you're free to do anything you want. Um, we'd like for the purposes of this uh, meeting to have a, 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 a Twitter monitor, so someone, I know a lot of people couldn't be here physically, um, if someone can be, Linda, are you gonna do that? Thank you very much. Um, in, in particular, people trying to ask questions or give input uh, and can't do that um, uh, in person. Um, as Dana mentioned, this is going to be facilitated by students. It's also for our own education, I think. Uh, and I've certainly learned a lot from being in their environment in the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, and one person who's going to take, we, we're asking for one person to take notes. So not only to tweet and not only to give feedback online, but also to take notes from this uh, meeting. I don't know if there's anyone already volunteered to do that. Uh, can someone do that? Okay, thank you very much. Um, so before we actually start the discussion, I just want to set out what I think are uh, solid parameters for the discussion. As everything, as always is the case here, it's open for discussion, but I'm just trying to um, you know, govern the ungovernable in, uh, in, a, in a friendly way. Um, uh, first of all, as I said in the email last night, what we want to have a discussion about is, is how to promote interests that are common to all of us. That is to say, not at the Lehrstufuk level, not at the Afdeling level or Kapazitaisfuk level. Of course, they can inform the discussion as solid examples, <coughs> but we want to talk about issues and concerns and actions that can be promoted by all of us and promote the shared interests of all of us, including the students, support staff, librarians, uh, etc. Uh, so this needs to be an inclusive, uh, not an ex exclusive uh, conversation. The second parameter is, without drawing a division, we want to draw a distinction between the micro and macro levels. That is to say, of course, managerialism is something that plagues uh, Dutch and European um, academia, but I think you would agree with me that there are also very local manifestations of that that cannot be addressed 
at the national level, and I think that's something we need to uh, distinguish between. And so if and when you reach that point where you want to uh, introduce a particular proposition, try to make a distinction between local and um, national or local and, and, and global. Um, we are striving, I think the purpose of this meeting is to inventory and list what are our goals in conversation with the goals already set out by the new university and um, we want them to be as concrete as possible because I think, again, I think I speak for lots of people here who think that the concretization has yet to come with, with a few exceptions. Uh, certainly at the teacher's uh, level, and they haven't been visible enough in, in my opinion. Uh, we also want to, so we want to set out an action or a set of actions. We also want to talk about what kind of leverage and be creative about what kind of leverage we have as staff and what that requires in terms of cooperation with students. And I have some ideas, I'm sure many people have other ideas. Um, and the last thing we want to do is to talk about uh, how we solidify working action relationships with both local and national and international uh, action uh, groups. So anyone who has suggestions on that, I think that will come more towards the end, but that's uh, the three things I uh, to uh, pursue. And again, if you have other things you want to pursue, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I'm just setting a tentative uh, agenda. Last thing, uh, and this is in conversation with lots of the emails and uh, talks we've had yesterday. One, uh, uh, there, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to brutally collapse um, uh, many of the uh, themes uh, that Marcus set out in his general email yesterday uh, into two main themes as suggestions for, uh, for discussion. One of them is the quality of and the relations between teaching and research and how that actually you know, projects onto pretty much everything that, that we do. And the second and obvious theme and related theme is the democratization or decentralization or increased participation, however you want to call it, of uh, uh, students and staff in the daily running and strategic thinking of the uh, Okay, those are all proposals. You can take them, you can leave them, you can develop them. From now on, I give the mic to Dana. I have one thing. Sorry, I'll get done to done. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, I just, just very briefly, I'm a little sick, so I'm not going to talk a lot, um, but I just wanted to uh, point out that this, um, this meeting, which thanks to everybody for coming, and apologies for the people who were actually planned to speak here at this time, who were um, uh, nice enough to move their, uh, their, uh, their activity elsewhere, and for the next people who are scheduled for 2 o'clock who are going to find out that they're going to have to find another room. Um, I wanted to point out that we've organized this, this meeting um, as, a, as a meeting in support of the student movement. So what we're trying to do is to find a way to ally ourselves as UFA staff with, what, with the broader goals of what has been going on here. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, but I, um, so I want to point out a few technical things about this because not everybody within the student body agrees with uh, the student protests that have been going on and not everybody within UFA staff supports everything about what has been going on. Uh, we would like this to be as open and inclusive a discussion today as possible, which is one of the reasons why we held it in this room as a kind of open forum. But I also wanted to point out that what is said here is all, uh, in my opinion, part of the public domain is being tweeted and we're finding ways to live stream what is being said here as well. So to everybody here, I just want to point that out that this is not a private UFA staff meeting. There will be students here, people are free to walk in, and uh, using the hashtag that we came up with and the live stream, we're just trying to get um, the discussion out as, uh, as broadly as we can. Okay, and now I'll give the microphone to Thank you. Thank um, you. So, how to proceed now? As you see, uh, Dan is a uh, guy's already writing down a couple of agenda points that will be discussed. And I wanted to ask people if you have other points you think should be on the agenda. Um, if someone raises a point, we don't have to uh, talk about it immediately. We will write it down and then when we get to it, we will discuss this. So is there someone who feels like there's a point uh, that should be on the agenda? Yeah, my point, my, my, my. It's, it's best to... Uh, yeah? yeah, okay, so, well, I have a point, but perhaps I can first, so my name is Rens Bolt. Perhaps I can first express my immense pride. I'm really proud of the student that started this, that 
action. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> when I see around here, but I'm also extremely, uh, I'm almost embarrassed that we uh, professors and lecturers and teachers did not uh, start this action. So it's really great. At the other hand, you said we can be frank here. So um, then I come to my point that you don't have the agenda. I also realize that, you know, by you know, entering a building, not by a building, we're breaking the law, so to say, right? which is a matter of fact. Um, so I also have sometimes doubts about these things. But historically, I also realize um, that uh, without doing these kinds of work uh, uh, I made, I don't know the exact uh, you can't sometimes reach, you cannot reach anything. I mean, just think about uh, people like, you know, it's a bit of a cliche, but people like Dundee or uh, Martin Luther King, without you know, civil uh, disobedience, it wouldn't have been possible. So, so in fact, I, I, after lots of talks about it, I think myself, but also many of our, uh, our teachers here, we really do support this occupation. Um, after long uh, course. However, now I'm to however, all the all scientists and humans do. However, there's one point I also like to stress. I thought, wouldn't it be lovely now that the Safe Bay is making the first move to try to do this? This is a question eh, that we have to decide on, on all of us. Wouldn't it be lovely to try to do, to move forward together with the Safe Bay towards the Hague, towards other places, now that they have made their first moves? I also re read yesterday uh, on uh, Folia that uh, a certain name case from the new university, I don't know if he's here, okay. he says, well, perhaps now that they make the first move, they don't have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 off they don't have to quit. Um, that's the question. So could we do this together with the I'm going to write a, a cooperation with the CVB with a question mark in the end on the agenda. Thank you. Um, and also, for the sake of discussion, we are really happy with everything you just said, but um, Try to keep your statement as to the point of the discussion uh, as much as possible. <laughs> uh, any other points that should be on the agenda? should become a stop on the financial policy uh, of the, the board of the UEFA at this moment. Because there's so much unclear, a lot of students don't want that all those buildings go away. And I think it should become a, a control organ or something like that, perhaps from the head. Okay, a uh, control on financial situation at the UVA. Mm -hmm. Any other points for the agenda? So I am from the VU University. Uh, are there some other people here or not? No. So I was very active in the Verontruste Vuurs two years. Yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, in the Verontruste Vuurs two years ago, and uh, that time it was very much a teachers' movement because uh, supporting staff were very much afraid, and students they were not facing the consequences yet of what's going on in universities as they are here. And uh, we finally managed to uh, get the dean out and uh, the chair, he left. And I can say that basically nothing really has changed. So we have very much experience that this is, although there are some local uh, issues, this is very much a national issue, especially because we are each other's competitors. So everybody was looking at you at that time and say, oh, you're so, oh we feel so much pity for you. Uh, because your safety bay is so ridiculous, but look at us, we're doing fine. <laughs> and we understood it was not the case, but, uh, well, as you have experienced now. So I really think <coughs> we have to push this at very much at the national level. Otherwise, you can kick out your safety bay and uh, nothing much will change. So shall I write this down on the agenda as uh, cooperation, national cooperation? Also, I'd like to point out that tomorrow there will be a national assembly here of all the universities where uh, the un new university is active now. So if you'd like to be there, then tomorrow, I don't know what time, but here. No one knows the time. 3.30, 2.30, 2.30 national assembly here tomorrow. I'd like to add to your point. I think we should try to find out what troubles can be addressed here and what troubles should be addressed at The Hague specifically and then also try to discuss, start to discuss about the MUP, the revision of the MUP. The MUP was the law that was called by some re of the university structures 
and we have to try to get on the agenda whether the map should be revised and in which ways. Uh, the map is now added to the uh, agenda. And you be modernization university. <laughs> and also the point you made, um, I think for every issue discussed, uh, it should be concluded with some kind of action. <laughs> or what, what are we going to do about it? And then it would be good to discuss if it's something that should be addressed at the Safe Bay or at The Hague or somewhere else. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to say, uh, so uh, we're talking about the Safe Bay and as well as the national level, I think these are very much interlinked. There's policies going on at universities in experiment which will be taken over by ministers uh, uh, and the other way around, uh, the VSNU is in con continually in contact with the minister and um, so I don't think we can um, have, a, 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 the Safe Bay is not an ally of us, of ours. Uh, the Safe Bay is one of the enemies. They're, the problem is on different levels at the same time. At the Safe Bay, at the national level, also at the European level. And what we should say is, they make all the problems, they should solve it. Uh, we will take uh, actions, maybe strike actions, we should talk about these things and put pressure on it uh, as a whole. Uh, the, 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 um, uh, there uh, have been experiments at universities with the Bersalen stelsel. Uh, um, before it becomes national policy, so the, the minister can take that from a, uh, a local Safe Bay. Well, um, the Safe Bay and the minister together are the problem. Um, so, yeah. I think it's a really good point you're raising, um, but as at this point of the discussion we're searching for uh, points that should be on the agenda. Uh, this point is under cooperation with the Safe Bay, question mark, I think. Uh, so, when that point will be raised, okay. please um, d let's, uh, let's have discussions about this. So, if someone now wants to react on this point, please keep it to when we get to the point on the agenda. Uh, you first. So, I have just arrived in a bit of a rush, but of course the meeting was called at the last minute, so I tried to be here as early as possible. Uh, I don't know whether the points that I'm going to mention have been said already, uh, but I have two very practical uh, things uh, on my mind. The first one is, well, it seems that um, uh, until two years ago, the Faculty of Humanities financially was not in such a bad condition. And all of a sudden, we have a deficit of several million euros. So I think it would be a good idea to have the creation of a committee, an independent committee that investigates how is it possible that all of a sudden we have uh, this huge deficit. This committee should have uh, at least one uh, professor from the university as a representative of uh, the staff and at least one student also as representative of the students. And then also persons who are not attached uh, to the university but who can be uh, as uh, uh, external experts about the issue. Now, this is the first point. Yeah? Um, now, do you think this point fits with the financial situation of the CVB, or should it be a diff uh, separate point? I want to see a temperature check, so people who think these are two separate points, please do this. People who think it can be uh, one and the same point, We will address it uh, at the financial situation of the UFA point. Yeah, of course, it's a soup uh, item, sub item. And uh, the second one is, uh, well, I think that this is not just a problem of uh, the University of Amsterdam, as uh, it has been said. It's not only a problem of Dutch universities. I think it's a global problem. And, I th and the very fact that we are speaking English here shows that we might have attention from way beyond the borders of Holland. Actually, I'm not Dutch myself, huh? uh, although I am a member of the staff. Uh, so I think many of us have contacts also uh, with their networks, with uh, uh, colleagues outside of Holland. And I think it would be interesting to use these networks also to draw attention to what is happening here. So I would also suggest that uh, we issue a manifesto, uh, a short document that uh, says exactly how we envision 
uh, the university of the future, why uh, these changes that are taking place are just negative for the university and for research generally, and we want things to change in a different way, and uh, perhaps this manifesto could be used also by uh, people who are living in similar situations, uh, both in Holland generally, but also outside of Holland in other universities. Great, we like uh, manifestos here. <laughs> yes, I just wanted to raise a slight concern that we may end up spending a lot of time analysing the problems. I'd really like to have some attention for what are we concretely going to do as teachers in the next two weeks. Um, in terms of concrete demands, this goes under democratisation of the university. I would like to put on the agenda um, when it comes to a chosen board, I think a great starting point is the rector is leaving this summer. Let's elect the next rector. That can be done without loss of face. And also, connecting to Marco's point, uh, complete financial transparency. Good. <clears throat> At this point, I'd like to inform you that uh, we have a long agenda, so I'm going to uh, have the last couple of people who are raising points and then we will start with the real talking. Technical points. Um, if you don't mind, would all teachers please introduce themselves before they uh, speak up? If that's, okay. that's a great point. Please say who you are, where you're from and uh, what your favorite color is. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm a philosophy student uh, from Humanities Rally. And I, I would like to add something to you, to your point, because I'm very interested in how the, the teacher staff at the UFA thinks about um, the democratic model in the, at the University of Leuven, where the rector is elected by uh, um, a percentage of 70% uh, uh, teachers and 30% students, and then the rector um, uh, elects um, is uh, the other members of the CVB, so that's an addition. Good point. I think we will discuss this under uh, either the chosen rector or the international network thingy. Um, you, then we go to Gijs, and then we go to... I'm Lena Dijs, Political Science. A uh, question uh, or point for the agenda from Tom van der Meer, Political Science, who couldn't be here. Um, he's into polling. Um, and he suggested that we do some kind of survey among staff to see which issues uh, and, and how many people support certain issues. Um, and he also volunteered to help set that up. We will have uh, a polling committee. Uh, Thank you. My name is Gijs van Donselaar. I teach philosophy en vie, so to speak. Um, I suggested we now stop assembling points for the agenda and start working on the agenda. And I think we should begin with number two, because that brings us closest to the present demands by the students, that is about democratization. And that we do not start with the one about the relationship between research and teaching, although that is very important. But I think we should have priority here uh, with the points that we share most with the students. I, I already saw uh, something of a temperature check about starting with democratization. Uh, someone with that hands really down low. Okay, no, then we will start with this. Um, technical point first. Well, I am Marco Pazzi from Religious Studies. I, I, uh, I don't know whether this is a technical point, but before we start with the agenda, I just wanted to say something. I wanted to thank the students uh, thanks to whom we are here today. And I think if we are here today, it's because we think that the action that has been taken was valid and legitimate. And if this space for discussion has been created, it's the students we have to thank in the first place. Even though uh, we really like all these thank you notes, um, it's going to keep up the discussion if everyone makes the same point. But thank you. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think for now, after the last point, we will start with the real discussion. <laughs> um, 
die also fünf Stunden Beispiel fährt. Um, just to, to remember the point that is already mentioned. What, what is the concrete or what should be the concrete result of our meeting today? I understand some people want to write a manifesto. There will be points we have to discuss further, obviously, but I would like to remind us all, time is in a hurry. On Monday, our dean will come up with a new version of the so-called Profil 2016. We have to counterface that. We have to offer or to confront him with something. With very lo local um, um, claims, we could uh, formulate here. To my mind, this is one of the most important things we should do today. Uh, I think it's, you're absolutely right. Um, how it usually works when we do stuff, and for now it's been working okay, so you could take over this model. You have a discussion about a point, it results in some kind of action points, and then together we decide on how the action should look, and appoint people that are gonna take, uh, actually uh, execute it. And then everyone can take on some points that are in his own field of knowledge or in your network, and everyone gets busy today and tomorrow, and you have a lot of actions. But of course, if you feel like it should be done in a different way, then that is possible too. So, the first point on the agenda is uh, democratization and the common interests of students and teachers. Okay, uh, first question. Um, do we fully share the points by the students, raised by the students, namely one, immediate resignation of the entire Collège van Bestuur, and um, elections to be written out by the, how is that called, Raad van Toezicht, or something, within a month. Um, I think, myself, we need some more time before these elections are going to put I'm going to put out because I think we first have to think about what kind of democracy do we want. Do we want something like Gemeenteraadsverkiezingen, as boring as that? Uh, <laughs> do we want to vote for an entire team for all functions, a party? Or do we want to vote for specific functions within um, the CVB? Um, do we want all members of CVB to be chosen, or should there be some technical specialists that are merely there because of their expertise? Um, and I think we have to sort of prepare thinking for that by assembling a body of students and teachers who will sort of research the various scenarios that are possible and who will then come with a, an advice or an advice about several possibilities that we then have a referendum on that and that then, in due time, we, we remove the members of CVB uh, one by one. <laughs> um, also, we must not be completely naive. To run a, 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 an organization like this, you have to have what is called dossier gets. We don't have it, they do. So, we might still try to rely on them for a while uh, to get to know what they know. <laughs> Did you pass the mic? Thank you. I very much agreed. I was, would just like to add that there was a General Why? Assembly. I'm Tamira Kombrink. I'm a, a history re PhD researcher. Uh, and um, there was a General Assembly just a few hours ago, and there was a student's group already working on a paper on democracy. So I just wanted to give that information. <laughs> yes, also uh, the demands we have. They're not written in stone, even though they're very important to us, but of course we would like to work with you as well. Um, Rudolf, and then. I'm Rudolf Falkhoff from Algemene Cultuurwetenschappen. I would like to stress that for me, as important as democracy, is also decentralization. <coughs> I think the CVB is a symptom of, a, of, of the uitwassen of centralization and democracy should be at a level of the, I think, the best, that's my personal opinion, at the level of the chairs. We have a 10 second reaction here. And then... I agree 
But now we have to decide, well, do we want democracy first, or do we want decentralization first? My personal opinion, I'm not really sure, but I think that if we get decentralization, democracy will follow. Question on Twitter. She wants to know how do colleagues feel about finding a mediator, like an emeritus uh, Hochlehrer, to facilitate discussion with the safe way uh, to rebuild the trust? Because I think I agree with her that the trust is lost now. So, a mediator. Uh, we're going to write this point down under cooperation with the safe way, finding a, 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 someone to mediate in this collaboration. Uh, yeah, Peter Huizer. Philosophy student and humanities, really. Um, I just because I think to sorry, I think to many of us it's 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 clear how bad policy and undemocratic organization are are interrelated. But I just want to make a, a suggestion that I mean we can we can continue this discussion here. But I think it makes sense to uh, appoint a few people that are going to write uh, an analysis so that it becomes clear to the people who are not here how these things. So yeah, just a question, who, who wants to do such a thing, maybe? <laughs> um, Jauke Huizer, also on behalf of Humanities Ready. Uh, I don't have a laptop with me, but I think it would be a good idea to put a laptop there so that everybody, every teacher before he leaves, can uh, sign up his email address and so we can also make, uh, uh, you know, we make talk task forces or working groups who can work out these points like making such an analysis. So, if anyone has his laptop here, then it might be a good idea. Is there anyone with a laptop here who could um, have it here? Yeah. Yeah, but she's taking. Oh, yes, great. Thank you. Another quick point about democracy. So, one reason why some colleagues might be uh, somehow perplexed about it is that they might think about the 60s sort of situation which is the students wanted to determine the entirety of the curriculum, decide their own grades, all of that. But there's something very different now here. So in the 60s it was the students versus the faculty. And because the universities back then were self-governed by a bunch of old white men, you know, and that was a terrible thing in many other ways. But now it's no longer <laughs> the same. Now you have students and faculty together against externally appointed managers with different priorities. And that's why democracy matters now. It's not the kind of scary 60s type thing. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of people with hands up, so if you have to wait for a little bit, I'm really sorry. I tried to do what I can. Sorry, um, I suggest that we take your suggestion and start assembling such a working group right now. Because otherwise that point will be postponed and postponed. And um, I'm not Speak up, can't hear you. So, oh, okay. I'm not sure I am doing him a service, but can I nominate someone for that for that place? Temperature check, nominating. Yes. Or should people nominate themselves? <laughs> well, in that case, I'm, I'm not sure I'm doing him a service, Robin, but I nominate you because you are a specialist in democracy and uh, civil disobedience, and you have been active all along during this stampede. <laughs> Um, I think, uh, Robin, if you, if you feel like uh, accepting this nomination, please come here. Uh, if anyone else... Um, if during this discussion you feel that there's a working group where you, your name should be on, please come to the front, come to the laptop and write it down. Um, really short points and then you... Yeah, very short point, Vance Bolt again uh, on computational humanities, both Faculty of Science and Faculty of Humanities. Um, uh, we, we, we first, we, before we ins install a working group, we first have to decide what will be the division of, of students and staff in terms of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, proportional, uh, uh, proportionality in voting. I mean, at, at some universities, in Leuven, for example, uh, staff has 70% and students only 30%. I mean, this has to be decided before the working group can start. I think, I think this is a working group on uh, uh, and making an analysis of the structure of the UFA. Um, so I'm not sure this is not really a representative organ, but I don't know if you feel the same way. I don't care. <laughs> I'm all in favor of working group. I'm Molly Glassius, I'm from political science. 
I think social working groups should have representation from different faculties, so we hear the story from very different sides, yet of course it should be a small work, uh, workable group. But let's please not only go away here with a working group, I think that's very dangerous and problematic. Let's think about how we can make uh, the support by teachers, and maybe it's not big in psychology, I'm sure it's very big in social sciences, make that visible. We really need to do that in this coming week. So I really want to start thinking about strike action, petitions, or something perhaps less traditional, something we're going to do in the next week as opposed to working group studying things. Um, uh, union members came together um, last uh, Thursday um, and they started to uh, uh, talk with each other what can we do and there will be a meeting next Thursday uh, between 12 and 3 o'clock in the Doolezaal. Um, uh, everybody uh, will be male or at least all union members and uh, everybody will be um, uh, we we're trying to mobilize everybody to talk about what could we do, what kind of action. Uh, what kind of goals we have, what kind of actions we can uh, use in order to put force behind our uh, um, uh, demands. And um, uh, uh, the debate is open, so um, it, it could be, um, uh, well, uh, strike action uh, is also a possibility to talk about uh, this. Um, and there will be a, a union, um, sorry, in the vakbondsbestuur, <laughs> Uh, will be there uh, with uh, knowledge about uh, uh, strike, uh, war, and things like these. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's quite open, and I think this is part of the whole discussion. And um, so next Thursday there will be a meeting. Um, I would like to ask you if you want to have a separate point on the agenda, specifically actions. Temperature check. Who says yes? We need to have an extra point with actions. Action and leverage, it's uh, the point that we we're going to discuss next. <laughs> Sorry. Jan Lazatic, Theatre Studies. Um, I just want to bring in a point which seems to be crucial also to the student protest, and the strength of this protest lies in the fact that um, students permanently, with uh, a lot of alertness, point to weaknesses and point to shortcomings without offering a solution in the first place. And I just want to stress, we have the right to speak out and to point to shortcomings. We, we are not obliged to offer solutions ad hoc. And there's also a danger to that. And we should take the strength of the, of the moment, although action is needed, I agree, absolutely. But um, on the other hand, um, a lot of frustration, a lot of agony within the faculty, um, as I witness it, comes from the fact that we are organized on so many levels in groups which are requested to give advice. But none of that seem to be taken into account, or only very selective. And uh, that creates a lot of frustration, that creates a lot of agony. And um, so to, to um, point with the finger to these shortcomings is a first step, and not to come up with solutions immediately. I think the democratic democratization and centralization, decentralization, I'm sorry, uh, as you discussed, should go hand in hand and would be part of the solution. Do we want to stay with this point or continue to the next one? Uh, who says uh, we need to talk about this a little bit more? Ooh, you are a lot faster than students are. <laughs> Concerning the decentralization, I, I guess everybody, he, everybody here uh, knows that one crucial point of our suffering, it's really a suffering, a suffering of the teachers, is the Graduate School of the College of Humanities. This is a part of the new governance structure. So the new governance structure was introduced in September. Somebody asked about the, 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 the structure of, of, of the EFA. It, it's pretty easy to look it up. Uh, since September, we do have a new structure called new governance. And part of the new governance is that we have two directors, a director of the graduate school, a director of the College of Humanities, and we, the teachers and the 
the, 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 the directors of the Opleidingen, we must go to these two persons and beg them that we get ours, that we can go on with our teaching, that we can go on teaching um, uh, fucking or, 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 or courses we as teachers support. We think this is really good, but it's not up to us to decide. They decide, so that they don't know anything about the specificity of, of our of our uplighting and of our fucking. So one concrete point is the new governance structure must be revised, abolished, or whatever. But this is a, a crucial point for us. Yes. May I maybe ask you also to take part in the work group, as you seem to have knowledge of the structure of things. You only have to write your name down on the mailing list. <laughs> and with the laptop. Het sleutelwoord van de vorige interventie is autonomie, herstel van het autonomie van het onderwijs. Oké, zo de keyword is um, restore autonomy. Uh, Dame Anne Trilling, uh, UD bij de programma Goed Politieke Communicatie en Journalistiek. Um, actually, I very much agree with a lot of points that are made about very concrete things, but I think we also should pay attention to the fact that it's not about one thing of geestweeks van. But it's something of the whole university. It's not something of FMK, of Natürkund, weet ik wat. Dus let's try not to focus too much on very, very specific things that actually are just a symptom and not really the, the problem. Um, Renske van Brandswijk, um, Youth and Media Program Group, Women Communication Science. Um, I was thinking all of these different working groups, I think that they're brilliant and it's wonderful if we can you know, work on ideas, but we need lots of input and it's going to take time. Uh, and I'm a little bit afraid that we might lose the momentum that is here now. Um, so one of the things that I personally, I was here yesterday, um, because I'm a flex worker now and I don't have my own office, I thought, um, why not come here and flex work? This is a new building. Uh, so this is you know, an idea perhaps for a lot of other teachers to, who don't have offices to come and flex work in this building. <laughs> um, let me see if I can summarize this point and then we could move on to the next one. I think um, it is very important that here you come up with concrete actions for now and use the momentum that we have. But I think many of you said that to um, have a con concrete idea of democratization and decentralization, you first need an analysis of the structure of the UFAD to see what points, uh, where there's room for improvement. And this will probably be a longer term project. So I think that is why that working group was called into existence. Um, can we move on to the... Before we move, I agree we should move on. I just, a uh, guy, Geltner, Medieval History. Um, we, I'd like to uh, propose a temperature check on one uh, manifestation of decentralization, which I think is common to, uh, or may be common to all of the faculties, um, but is experienced, experienced particularly drastically in the FTV, namely um, that department chairs, that the basic working unit is no longer a department. Okay? The basic working unit of which I think many of us have been, in which many of us have been raised or socialized into, for better or worse, is no longer the department. So uh, I want to have a temperature check about whether um, bringing back, at whatever the analysis may be, that a principle of governance in the university is that the basic working unit both for research and teaching, and this sort of dovetails into the next agenda point, is the department. What do you that, mean by departments? What do you mean? As it is now. Afdeling. As they are now. Afdeling, uh, capacit what, what's called today, I don't know, across the faculty, capaciteitsgruppe. At the FMV, they're called institutes. Pardon? At the FMV, they're called institutes. What, whatever the organic... Okay. It has, to come, it has to come from our particular example, right? We. I, I work in a department that is 
de facto three capacitites uh, uh, which in global terms are three departments, right? History, used to be archaeology, now it is religion studies and uh, Euro European studies. These uh, departments for in, in terms of research and teaching work very much in close contact with one another. The current governance structure uh, undermines that uh, uh, those kinds of organic uh, discussions and work and cooperations within that department. That is not to exclude in any way interdisciplinarity, et cetera, et cetera. But it means that we need disciplines in order, you know, before we have interdisciplinarity. So the idea is that these traditional, quote unquote, but even new things like media studies, it's a new department. Let's have that uh, as the basic building block of the university at whatever level and let the people of the current uh, departments or institutes indeed make that decision rather than uh, uh, the one-size-fits-all uh, managerialism that we've been experiencing brutally in the last few So if that is, we can have a temperature check on that, which we have, thank you. <laughs> My name is Arela Graciani from Anthropology at, from Anthropology at University of Amsterdam, uh, but formerly from the VU University, also this city. And I want us just to uh, remind you that uh, the VU a few years ago we started with the Van Drusse Führers, and a lot of analysis has already been done, and there are a lot of documents, and a lot has been written. So let's, let's not start all over again from zero, but let's use these analyses use these documents and we'll try to figure out also with the people from the view how we can uh, disseminate uh, these things so we don't have to start from zero there is a yep. lot of has been a lot of thought on this yes. could you also write down your email at working list so that people can contact you for this uh, thank you uh, uh, for me uh, my eyes have been opened by uh, the work of Chris Lorenz. Uh, his work is uh, important to understand the underlying problems. We, are, we tend to talk about symptoms, but the underlying problems is the method of financing. And if you finance output, product production, you will get these symptoms if you do it democratically or not. I think the basis, and it's also at the basis of the decentralization, and it is also at the basis of the organic uh, structure, is that you finance not the output, but the input. And that means that we have a fundamental discussion and a very painful discussion at the beginning. Which departments, which institutes do we, as a society and a university, think are necessary? That will be a very painful discussion and we should accept that that would cost jobs and losses. But once we have made that decision, we have these very strong organic structures which will be financed, kut kakut. And that means that the stress is no longer on production. If we have a good student, we can spend a lot of time on that student because we are certain of the pay we get. If we have want to undertake a risky hypothesis with a high chance of failure, but with a, maybe a very small chance of a huge success, we can do that without being frightened of taking too much time on it. So the basic thing, according to me, should be the stress on input and the work of Chris Lawrence has really opened my eyes on that. Maybe this is a technical point, but do we have committee now in function which is going which is going to um, study what kind of democracy would be most fitting for our university? Is it in function now? And in that case what is their deadline? When when are they supposed to come up with proposals? I nominated someone, but who are the, who are the others? Um, I think how this works now is first you assemble a couple of people who can work on this and you have them all together on a list and then they can meet after the assembly and de decide for themselves what would be the fastest time they can come up with proposals. 
Temper temperature check on this? No, not really. Sure. The, the problem is that now we have a lot of people on a list that are going to uh, uh, analyze the, the structure of the UFA and see what proposals you can have for democratization and decentralization. And Gijs asked if this committee is in function now and when they will start and if they have a deadline for proposals. Um, I see a lot of technical and short points. So technical first and then short ones. With keep it political science. Uh, actually, uh, there's already a committee set up by the students, and they were uh, expected to start at two o'clock discussing this issue. Uh, so maybe we can join them. Yeah, just to add to that, I think uh, there's a separation between analysis of all the problems which we need to do to convince our colleagues and coming up with different democratic models. And if you confound the two, then it's going to take forever. But the democratic models are already being explored by students, and we just need to add on a few teachers. Um, I think this meeting is probably already going on upstairs. So if a couple, of, uh, some teachers that want to be involved in this uh, want to go upstairs now, you can leave this assembly and go upstairs. Does anyone have an idea where the committee is meeting now? So if you would like to join this meeting, you take the stairs up there, you walk to the corner, but not on this floor, one floor higher. So the second floor, here in the corner, you'll find the room. Can I just, may I just ask the people who are in the committee to come and stand here so we can recognize them later on, we know who they are, it makes it easier later on for our organization when we know each other. <coughs> Committee, please present yourself. Well, I mean, it's still in the making, so it's not as if there's... <laughs> <laughs> Whereas there was some other... Yeah, that's right. Somebody's already gone off. you want to take off. Yeah, also, I don't know, do we have one or two committees? If we have two, I think it makes sense to... Yeah, or ask us to come here, or just have people raise hands who, who want to devote some time to this in the in the in the coming days for both writing an analysis and thinking. But maybe you can. So I mean, there's a list on this computer. If you want to be in any of the committees that are don't yet exist but are in the prosa formation, so it can come here and present itself. Uh, just uh, put your name on the computer and uh, someone, me for the democratization and uh, other people for other committees will contact you and uh, very soon and uh, then um, we'll plan something. But maybe it's good to see how many we have here already because now it's unclear. I think for now we only have one committee but there are a lot of other committees that will be here. How many people in the How many in the people? Yeah. How many people are on the list now? Um, yes, yeah, something went wrong, so everyone who was on the list, please come. <laughs> everyone who wrote his name down on the list, please come back and do it again. Uh, yeah, I'm also part of the research group that we're discussing, the student okay. research group, and we were supposed to be uh, downstairs, actually, because we were going to join the debate, so if there are still some people upstairs, get them downstairs, that would be my <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> So then maybe, uh, I don't know, Robin and Enzo, could you? Thank you. Hi, I'm Susie Zelstra. I'm a history uh, teacher now. <laughs> I was wondering if it would be possible to ma also make a general email list, because it took some time for me to find out about this <coughs> meeting. And now that everybody's here and so supportive, then maybe everybody can send the email address or, or, or put it in the computer, and then we can be ready sooner. Right? I suggest if you want to be on some kind of email list and want to be part of or just receive information, then please don't leave before you have written down your email address on the list that is probably now being made, yes? I'm Ika Arts, I'm uh, uh, from the history department, gender history. I wonder, uh, would, wouldn't it be a very logical next step to transform all, all email uh, lists and other discussions group, discussion groups into an action committee of the staff. 
because otherwise you can take decentralization too far, I think. <laughs> you have to be visible. Can we have a temperature check on that? <laughs> A small announcement, and after this, I really suggest we go on to actions and other stuff. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ryan. Uh, there was a, supposed to be a presentation about the Magda House in the, in the role of a profit center. Uh, we do this, we, we convene now in room 223, two, so second floor, all the way in the back on the left. So. Anyone who wants to join that, feel free to leave. <laughs> Um, for the rest of this discussion, uh, we have a couple of points on the list that need to be, uh, that are more about defining what the problem is, and then we have a lot of people uh, and points uh, uh, that need our attention about what concretely should happen. Um, I want to ask you if you'd like to first continue with the analysis of the problems, which are points like quality of relations, the relation between local and global, um, international cooperation, national cooperation, the MOOC, and uh, that's it actually. Or if you want to continue with demands and actions like the elected director, the manifesto, how to use your international network and stuff like that. So who wants to uh, start first with the analysis of the other problems on the list? And who wants to now go to actions? Good. <laughs> Do you want to just go to the manifesto now or start with uh, uh, the cooperation with the CVB? Manifesto, temperature check. Uh, I think there's uh, some, some confusion. Or does everyone... CVB? Who wants to talk about cooperation with CVB? No, okay. Maybe... Um, does anyone have a suggestion for how to proceed now? <laughs> yes, I am. I think uh, uh, I'd like to propose a, uh, a series, I'd like to ask people who are participating here to formulate uh, concise uh, points on action points, whether that's uh, forming a workshop, writing a petition, etc., etc., so we can have ad, ad hoc, uh, not to sound uh, terrible, ad hoc uh, propositions that people can basically vote. We are, again, to go back to what Dan said at the beginning, we're not, we're an ad hoc group, we're not a, necessarily a, represent, a representative group, but I think that one thing I would personally like to see uh, up online and in the press by tomorrow evening at the very latest, that is to say before Monday morning and before we get slapped with the hair, 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 hair formed uh, Verzi of Bofil uh, 360, a, uh, a counter uh, proposal or a state of affairs from the staff and the students saying, first of all, let's have another discussion. We don't want to, again, another concession, another concession. We want, these are the pain points, and I think it's very important to sort of uh, offer what is it that is hurting, and here are some of the things that we uh, do not wish to compromise on, whether these are uh, democratic or participatory or, uh, or political principles or very specific measures su such as res resignation of this person uh, or, or, or that person, etc., uh, uh, etc. Et so I think, I know it might be difficult, but I propose that people focus for a second, uh, for the second part of the, of the discussion about how concretely to uh, move forward. And again, I think it's not a problem. There are at least a hundred people here coming from various departments. Uh, again, we don't necessarily have to claim that we're speaking for all of the staff and the students of the university, but we can certainly put it online and we can uh, have a, 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 a temperature check in that way as well. And the least that we could do is say at 8 p.m. on Sunday night, we have, I hope, uh, five, six thousand, seven thousand signatures uh, of students and MUVA uh, made workers who think that these principles mean of mayor are, uh, are, are, are representative. Uh, and with that in mind, if that's okay, seems to be, unless there are massive objections, I propose to move to discuss uh, concrete action, uh, action points. And after that to talk about leverage, because I think we want to offer carrots and sticks as well in this meeting. 
Good, okay. so we move now to concrete actions. First we have a technical point and then... Um, I think there already is such a petition, right? So there's the change.org petition that also famous academics have signed. Why not, can we, why not call everybody to sign that petition which is already in place? There are some more technical points, um, but uh, sure. Thank you. I, I agree. I would encourage everyone to, to sign the change.org petition. Uh, this, uh, what I specifically want is to people to propose beyond the change is it's a general proposition stating that the state of affairs is nasty and we want it to change. And we support the students who have led to this moment. I'd like to talk about concrete ways of moving forward and have temperature checks about how people feel about those concrete uh, steps. to all the staff. People don't know where to find this change of all petition. I think we already have the six points that the students have come up with. That could be the petition that all the staff can go behind. We don't have to reinvent it, but we have to tell them where to find it and where to sign up to it. It's, people just don't know where to go right now. So more visibility and a better communication. If people have suggestions on how to improve this, then please raise your hand, but first... Hi, I'm Usher. I'm actually from Utrecht University. I couldn't be here tomorrow and I feel that I'm as much part of this problem uh, and should be here today as well. Uh, I have seen uh, Louise Geunen speaking here on Thursday and what I feel was very um, um, perhaps cynical is that um, she was emphasizing technicalities of, of reorganizing and I think that it's a major pitfall uh, that we uh, um, uh, are seduced into that debate and, and while we actually want to talk about vision because that's she's so obviously lacking vision so we should have like five principles or, or perhaps these six principles discussed here vote on these principles saying this is what we actually understand the university to be Thank you. I just wanted to say that many, uh, uh, my name is Malika Brand. I work at Social Sciences as a supported staff member. And I just wanted to say that uh, I think that many staff members, especially also supporting staff members, may be afraid to sign the petition which is online already because it seems that when you sign it, you also sign for the occupation or in, uh, you know, support of it. And uh, uh, that may not be a problem for you, but maybe for other people it may be. So in that sense, I would um, want to see if that could be like, uh, you can support what people stand for, but not for the occupation as such. Thank you for that comment. It's a misunderstanding or uh, misreading of the of specifically of the change.org petition. Is it explicitly it does not support uh, uh, the uh, the occupation specifically. It supports the spirit in which these people, what led it to it, and the principles for which these people stand, rather than the occupation itself. Read the text. Uh, it does not uh, in any way support the occupation. Okay, so I think everyone agrees the petition is a good thing to spread. Uh, Vivian Matthews Boone of Political Science. Uh, this is kind of related to the point that Marika just made, not so much to do with the occupation, but what I have noticed amongst colleagues, both my department and other departments, is that some are afraid to show up. Some are afraid to sign stuff because they haven't got either permanent contracts yet, so they, you know, still on tenure track, or they are on flexible contracts and feel, uh, you know, this might be detrimental to their careers. And I think that is something that we do need to address. And I don't know how. Uh, personally, I just try and talk to them and make them feel comfortable. But I wonder if there's a better approach than just like, you know, an arm around the shoulders. <laughs> The younger people who are not students anymore, but who are very secure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, Peter Forshaw from Religious Studies. Um, on the question of visibility, I've heard about this through Facebook, but sometimes the link's down and then the link's gone, depending on what um, I'm using. Is there a website? I mean, and should we sort of crowdfund the website so that there's better visibility and people can network to it from other universities? Um, there's a website of the new university. 
I think if you Google new university or new uni, newuni.nl, you will find it. Uh, the list of demands is there as well as our many support um, support things. But, but don't you think that we should then now, right now, go through these five or six at the points yeah. and to see if there's agreement on them, yeah. also among yeah. staff members? Read them out. Yeah. Read them out, please. That's, yeah. Thank you. That's good. We can do that. Does someone uh, with a laptop have the six points here? I don't know them by heart. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have them uh, here. So, six demands. The first one is democratic election of the university board. Good, check. Two, a change of the allocation model. Finance based on input, not on efficiency. Sorry, I think this is too general. We don't really understand what this really means. Um, also, because one does not really exclude the other, right? So, how are these two related? You also want to say something? No. Oh. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, I do think that's. Uh, oh, my name is Patricia Pistas. I'm from the Media Studies Department. Uh, I do think it is too general to say based uh, only on input. We also need output. What, what is really important is that we get more money into the university and less to big funding boards, uh, bodies that have all the research money now, etc. So I think that is very fundamental. And then a balanced way between in and output, I think that would be really important. Some output we, money we really need yeah. to get PhDs funded, for instance. So. Um, I want to ask the students here if someone was part of uh, creating the list of demands, as I was not. Maybe uh, come downstairs, come here to... Okay, good. We have people that can have more. Uh, and there are a lot of technical points and short points. I'm going to ask a student first to explain a little bit what uh, our understanding of the demand was, and then we continue to the technical and the short points. Well. I, I didn't uh, put down these demands, but I think they are deliberately kept general so that in principle many people can agree with them. I think how to work them out concretely uh, is something that for a large part still needs to be done. So um, I suggest not to maybe discuss them now one by one and try like, ah, are we, to what extent do we agree with this, but maybe to, uh, yeah, indeed, again, uh, try to, 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 to work this out into something that most of the teachers can agree with as soon as possible. Also, yeah, it's good. Um, yeah, just, I think we can have, bring it to a proposal. So, um, the current situation is that uh, financing of uh, departments is mainly based on uh, output, that is number of students, number of PCs, number of diplomas, and also number of funds uh, you get from the NAO, for instance. And uh, uh, what we propose is a shift, a better balance, I would say, towards a more input-based model in which uh, the universities okay, agree. themselves so decide. So, so I, I would make it a shift. I mean, I think there is always some output component that should be in there. Because if you have more students, you have more costs. Guy, do you still have a technical point? Guy? Yeah. I just want to say, and this actually is uh, the question I just got asked. I think there, uh, again, before we could spend many hours and many good quality hours uh, uh, unpacking these, these principles and debating them, and I think that's important. I think that the specific goal of this meeting, or what is the, or what is what should be unique about this meeting, is to have staff input on our frustrations and how we propose to move forward. And my in my email yesterday, I proposed, and it's a proposition, that uh, having gotten, having received feedback and input from this forum, then then people will be nominated. Uh, to have an overleg with Humanities Rallies, with the new universities, with the FSR, with the CFR, with the, uh, uh, 
and uh, come up with more concrete plans, also on the basis of suggestions uh, made here. I think, I personally think that, the, as you said, that the points in general are very inclusive. They don't commit people to specific uh, things. They're kind of a temperature check of uh, our sources of frustrations, and that we might use our time better by fielding concrete suggestions and uh, delegating temporary uh, power of overlap to uh, people from, from this form. Sorry, and one more thing, and specifically, and I think this is something that we need to do at the university staff level, and specifically urgent, is, back to Joseph's point, I think we need to come up, ideally, with the backing of as many department people as possible from across the universities and beyond, but specifically to counter the eventuality that Profil 2016 uh, is, uh, is, is a point of discussion at the FGV because I think it's symbolic. What's happening here is going to happen, has happened, and will continue to happen later. So I think it's tactically useful to just put a stop to it, and it's everyone's, beyond, beyond the FGV, it's everyone's, um, I think, prerogative to make that happen and to have a useful suggestion to how to move beyond it. So there are still a lot of people with points, uh, short points and long points. Um, but I think it might be good to also move on with the rest of the demands so you have an idea what demands are on the list and whether you can um, agree with it or not. So please, please try and keep it really short so that we can move on. Yeah, I think if you want thousands and thousands of signatures to show that staff are supported, you do have to go through this list Quickly. now. Yeah. And this number two, I think it can very easily, it's a problem I know for a lot of my colleagues who find it unclear, problematic. If you just put the word not exclusively on output in there, then so many more people balance, can sign up. Balance, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's very helpful. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, could you write down in the, in the notes that we're going to change uh, finance-based on input, not only on efficiency and balance. Put in the word balance somewhere. <laughs> uh, technical point. Yes, I'm sorry to interrupt um, this, but um, I'm from a PhD student in political communication. And as was mentioned, I think we have a momentum here and we have to Communication is mentioned a few times, and I see some people from the communication department, and I think it will be good to now have a committee right now to organize, um, get things organized so that we actually have the press moment tomorrow evening. But then we should start working now, and um, that is my suggestion. So we would like to join. Uh, <coughs> Uh, first of all, is there, uh, okay, there are some technical points, then we're going to do a temperature check on establishing this kind of work group and then you can start immediately. Well, again, there, there is already a committee, so maybe the, the teachers uh, can join the students. Exactly. They're sitting over there. Yeah, that's the, the media group uh, in that door. Um, is it not a good idea to run through the several points first, quickly, yeah, quickly. quickly, and then see whether we as teachers have specific things to add or to take away? Yeah. Good. That's what we're going to do then. Okay. So, uh, we had one, the democratic election of the board, two, the change of the allocation model, finding a balance, three, cancellation of the current profile 2016. Um, <laughs> Uh, so this would be the plan for the reorganization, particularly of the humanities faculty, but you know, looking forward to other faculties as well, as I understand it. So uh, we want to put a stop to that. Shall we go first quickly to all the points and then have a discussion about it? So uh, number four, referenda per institute and program about collaboration between the UVA and the FU at the uh, Faculty of New Science. Number five, fixed contracts instead of flexible staff appointments. Well, um, uh, also, we already in the, in the discussion in the assemblies here uh, said that there is some merit to sorry. flexible appointments too. Be 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 careful. Um, please, please call it in English permanent contracts because yeah. fixed contracts means actually temporary. It's very, oh, very yes. strange. <laughs> permanent. That's it. Yeah, there, there was a confusion here. A permanent contract, not an appointment for life. Um, Ten years permanent. Yeah. And another technical point? Sorry, um, the, the previous one, 
nobody really responded to that, the referendum point. So could you read that one out again? We're now just going through the demands really fast and then we will discuss them uh, more. So the last one, number six, is an open debate about housing costs in relation to budget cuts of research and education. And then there's a small addendum, and that's the retaining the Bunga House as a Yuva location. As you know, the Bunga House has been part of the Yuva for a very long time, and it will be now sold to some exclusive British Soho Hotel Club thing. Um, the general motivation behind all these demands is discontent with the current ways of management. Top-down, efficiency-oriented management damages the very thing a university should revolve around, research and education. Those are uh, all the demands, that is the petition. Uh, I think it's not all this is on a petition, but part of it is. Now we will go to discussing this. I see a short point, but I know you've been waiting a long time to talk, so. Yeah, I wanted to say this. My impression is, this, is that when uh, the demands were um, written down by the students originally, they were addressed to the Collegio Fondesture. But in fact, there are questions perhaps that should not be addressed to the Collegio Fondesture, because if it is more money that we want for the university, this is not something that the Collegio Fondesture can, uh, can give us. So I think uh, when we think about this point, and I think it's really good because this is a good starting point, uh, when we think about these points, we have to think about to whom they are addressed. To whom we are addressing ourselves. Uh, there are things that are specific to the University of Amsterdam. There are, there are things that are not specific and perhaps are just about the model that exists at this moment uh, in Holland. Not only the moment that exists now, but the, moment, uh, the model that is being implemented. Because we have to think about how things are changing and how they will look like in the future if they go on. Uh, in this way. So uh, I think we have to keep our minds awake about this very problem. To whom these points are addressed? To whom we want to ask things? This depends on how ambitious we want to be about this. Hi, I'm Thomas Franz, uh, sociology, PhD student. Um, I wanted to stress that I think what students need most at this point is time and I think that the staff could give them time so that leverage at, at some point that sort of should be really important because then we have some time to discuss this very complex matter and which way we should move but they drastically need time um, so I, I, was, I wanted to put on the agenda somewhere how are we going to give students time Actions-oriented and more time. Uh, Julie McBrien and Annika Berkens from Anthropology. Uh, we wanted to return to the point that was made some time ago before we went to the list of demands about having some kind of statement out tomorrow. And I'm glad that we all agree on the petition that's, uh, that's up on change.org and that we can sign that and reference that as a place to see the numbers of who's supporting this. But I still think that there needs to be something in the media, either in the form of an open letter or something like this, partly because in the media until now, there's very little talk that the teachers are involved and that the teachers not only support their students, but have their own demands that are connected to the students' problems. So I'm happy to participate in this. And Annika had an idea that overlaps with it. Well, my idea is because, um, well, we from anthropology, we are quite a successful EOC advanced grant department. Uh, I was thinking, can't we, um, ask the winners of the system, um, so the ERC advance grant winners of the University of Amsterdam to sign or to write a letter uh, which says we are the winners in the system but we don't agree on what is happening at this moment. Is that an idea? I see a big temperature check on this. Could you start working on it? And if people feel like they want to help. <laughs> I understand, but we're, we don't have a hierarchy, so you can do whatever you think as well. And people that want to help, please go and help. Okay.
Um, short points, then five. Uh, no, sorry, you're really short. My name is Gerard Verhoef. I am from Beter Onderwijs Nederland. I want to support you, but I mainly uh, want to ask you how can we work together? Because it's not only a University of Amsterdam problem, it's an uh, onderwijs problem, it's an education problem. And we are working now, we are fighting now for 10 years, mostly on universities and primary and secondary education. But, well, this is a great opportunity for us all. And uh, how can we help? I want to stay in contact, I want to Twitter, I want to write on the website. You are all invited for our symposium on 7th, 7th of March, but we can do more. Uh, and I don't know how, but I want to talk about that with a lot of people and help. That's what I intend to do. Thank you. Temperature check on this. I see some points and some reactions. Someone want to... Back to the point uh, of the this. All right. Mia Lerm Hayes from Art History. Um, for, yeah, okay. Mia Lerm Hayes, Art History. I think that uh, previous point about the winners of the system highlights something rather interesting. I think, having arrived here recently, that the whole of the Faculty of the Humanities in the UFA is a winner. Uh, being ranked uh, 45, 46 internationally in, uh, in the university rankings which are based on these metrical systems that we don't actually agree with but we have one in it, i.e. we are absolutely brilliant and I think that that particular, as not, none of my doing, um, that this point too, that we don't want um, you know, output to dictate uh, things, sounds as if we wanted to have money for um, not the best quality. I think we should really rephrase that um, because um, what we need to highlight is the um, illogical um, sort of um, this break in logic that exists between us showing the government that um, humanities here are excellent and they always say we want quality and so on and if we if you we get quality we'll fund you but now that they have the quality and they have it proven metrically they'll just say all right oh you've attracted more students as well we don't have more money so we'll give you less money for each student so that's that's really the problem that is totally illogical according to their own system that's become perverse yes perverse yeah. <laughs> Yeah, more generally perhaps, um, what, what all these financial mechanisms seems to forget, and maybe we hear also a bit, a university is a research institution, right? So if we are merely accountable for the numbers of diplomas or study points that we issue, then the whole idea about that we are a research institution is forgotten, and I think that we as teachers should add that to the list. Because what do they call a rendement? They call it rendement if in 10 years from now there will be no Amsterdam, for God's sake, Amsterdam academic who can read, let alone study, Hebrew any longer. So if you do not attract sufficient students, they close down a research group. What's the logic of that? And maybe we should get that in somehow. Concerning, concerning the addresses, we have three addresses. The first one is Frank van Vrij, Dean of the Faculty of uh, Humanities, because this whole thing started because of the so-called Bezaunigingen van en Profiel 2016. The second addressee is the College van Bistuur, and the third addressee is Den Haag. Concerning the first one, Frank van Vrij, I repeat that we need some people, we need some people here, look at you, uh, Mickey, one of these people. We need some people who come together and write a kind of manifesto that can be published before the new version of the Profil 2016 comes out on Monday morning. Frank must know, finally should know, that this whole project is nonsense and that it, that it has to be stopped. And he must, once again, he must hear the reasons. And this is what a group of people must do. I, I, I join the group. Then facilitation of this meeting will now be handed over to Sarah for a while. Um, 
please, if she missed something, uh, help her, and I will be back in a bit. Uh, yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Short reply to that. Actually, Humanities Rally uh, is doing with, we have uh, collected a number of teachers as well, mostly from, from languages now that are very active and very angry about yeah, the, the newer versions of the profile. So, um, yeah, come to us if you want to address this specific problem. At the same time, I think this is, of course, much bigger than the humanities faculties. But your suggestion, we're, we're working on it. And, and yeah, come if you have input, please. Very short, um, again, because I think that's very much connected to the winner-loser thing that we had. Really, let's try not to talk only about the thing like that Kleine Tal of Adriana and so, because I, I really agree, but really, let's frame it as a big thing. Let's, let's say, okay, that's something good for FMK for all the other ones as that's well. That's what I'm saying, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, we have frustrations, we've had frustrations for a long, long time. And very often we have had these discussions with managers uh, also in the OR, uh, um, we get it ignored, uh, we put forward the best arguments there are on the uh, best way, the most polite ways, and we get ignored. And uh, so um, uh, it's very, very good to uh, write a manifesto here, but we should also remember that a manifesto, uh, 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 the, the, the verbal power is limited. The a sort of physical power behind it. So we should also think about actions, really actions, that maybe strike action like this, uh, um, uh, where if, if a teacher doesn't uh, lecture for a day, if I don't lecture for a day, there will be about 300 students who will not have lectures. Eh? So laying down, uh, 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 stopping work that day. Um, so I would um, uh, want to make you remember that we do also need to discuss the actions and put a physical force behind it. It means that we need to discuss both our ideas, our goals, as well as our methods with our uh, co-workers. Yeah, there are a lot of workers who are uh, not so much self-confident or um, uh, don't have any experience in, in taking actions. We should bring them together. Next Thursday there will be a meeting in the Doolezaal between 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Um, please invite uh, uh, all staff uh, around you to talk with everybody next Monday, next Tuesday, this weekend. Um, so next Thursday, the 5th of March, there will be a meeting and there will be also union representatives there who know about uh, all judicial, juridical things. I was just wondering, I don't know whether it's possible, but my sentiment is that if teachers want to show that they their solidarity with their students, a way to show it is to go on strike. I mean, I, I really think that it's, it's, it's a possibility which should be discussed when you talk about action. So a, a teaching strike is certainly for uh, the profile 2016 and the way it's going to be implemented on Monday. It ha ha simply has to be shown that quite a lot of people are really against it and that they have the power to go against it and that they can show it through a strike. Shall we first do a general temperature check on this? Can everyone participate? Okay. About the strike, if you oh, want yeah. to strike. I teach, I teach. Okay, uh, I think you were first and then I will go to that side and look around. I want to point out that um, we are in this building, we have taken this building and it is a new action model. This is not an occupation. We are in this building, we are teachers and students and we are in a building which is our building. And one of the very fascinating points that we can do as an as a action is using this building for what we are doing. There was said that the temporary uh, people with no desk work here, that's fine. People, teachers who don't want to strike, personally I think we should do that, but people who, are, who don't want to strike could come here and teach. We must use this building as a university. That's very important.
Yeah, I wanted to say something about the idea of uh, the strike. I am totally against it, uh, although I totally support uh, all the actions that have been taken until now, including the occupation, but I want to explain why I am against the idea of a strike, or at least of a traditional kind of strike. I will never do a strike because I don't think that we are here to sell goods or to produce goods. We are here also because we are doing something for society, and that's precisely what universities are for in the first place. And it's exactly against the idea of the university as a kind of commercial enterprise that we should be against the idea of a traditional strike like not teaching. No, because when I go to the class, it's not just to transmit knowledge, but I'm also giving something else, and not just to the students who are in the classroom, but to society as a whole. So I would suggest perhaps alternative forms of sensitization about, uh, about this, and then having our class. I see two intermediate um, reactions, so we'll go there first and then we'll go to Please don't forget that the past couple of days I have learned an enormous amount of things. I have become freed in my head and this is also a very important thing to learn also for young people now. So. I don't agree with you on the principle of not striking. I think that we have taught young people, and even I have learned a lot of things from these actions. And, and a university is a place, the function of the university for society is to teach people to be critical and independent. And this is a very beautiful way to do that. Was another intermediate point here? Um, I mean, again, I don't agree with not striking, but I do take your point of, you know, basically talking to your students, and I've done that last week, and actually the response was like, and? <laughs> so, I mean, to engage them in dialogue, it was actually much more difficult, and even when you do promote a lot of time, you try and explain and stuff, the outcome, in a sense, is not necessarily that they, I mean, at least, you know, maybe I just was unlucky, but you know, that there is a deeper understanding, at least amongst the students I was speaking to, of what is going on, regardless of the fact that you explain it and you look at it from different angles and different things. So I just wanted to add that, that it's not necessarily leading to the result that you might want. First thanks. I agree with what you said. I'm not going to strike. Uh, the alternatives are more, much more effective. Much more, there are much more effective uh, alternatives. First of all, the first victims of a strike by teachers are the students. <laughs> also, the students who do not, as I do, sympathize with whatever what you are all, all trying to achieve. I simply have no right to put my students at a disadvantage simply because I do sympathize with your goals. Second, um, since students are going to be the victims of a strike, uh, I think it will not be effective because given that the way they have treated you, the CVB is not going to sleep one hour less because of that. Well, wait a minute. That... I have to Any make intermediate answer. points? Well, no? I okay, then I think it was your turn. <laughs> I, don't, I can't say whether I'm for or against a strike per se. For me, it would be important what that strike means or what we do, how, what kind of form we would give to it. And I think a strike would be interesting if we held alternative things for students. If we continued to teach classes or had workshops, and we could do it not only here, but we can occupy other spaces. We can hold them in corridors or <laughs> in the... In the The new rec building has all of these open spaces and we can all do what we want, teach something we're interested in, invite students to come so that students are still learning and still engaged, but outside the system so we can still make a formal statement of striking. Okay, there are, uh, I think, four intermediate, uh, five inter oh, first technical points. Um, so we have a lot of discussions about actions had uh, at Humanities uh, rally uh, uh, gatherings and I think one thing that works really good is to just uh, come up with ideas no matter what and uh, write them down and after that discuss whether we're gonna engage in a strike or just give students all a 10 as a grade which is not disadvantaging <laughs> them anyway <laughs> um, but, um, but, but there's a lot of things, so I would suggest a collective brainstorm and then afterwards talk also about the feasibility of a strike 
with getting other people with you. So I temperature check maybe first on that. Should we do a brainstorm and write everything down here? Yes? Okay. Uh, so you're going to do that then? Uh, then we go to the four or five intermediate points. I think you were first. Well, I wanted to respond uh, especially to Rudolf, I think uh, his name is, right? Um, well, the thing is that I try to teach critical and independent thinking all the time in my classes. And I think the importance of what I have to teach to the students is not lost because this thing is going on. Actually, it's quite the contrary. And I do think that what I have to teach, and this is the thing I can do uh, the best, actually, because it's based on what I have studied for my whole life, basically, is uh, precisely to uh, teach through my, my field also these kind, of, uh, these kind of things to the students. So when you don't have the students in your class and you cannot have, for instance, this conversation about uh, what's going on, then maybe you don't think that these students are coming uh, here or are participating in the action. So, yeah, okay. So I want to remind people that intermediate points are 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so let's keep to that. I'm sorry, I'm going to take 20. I think we have to move forward on organization and things are taking long and I think it might be good to have a work group strike and have a strike meeting and see what we are going to do and maybe have a, a group who's writing a general manifesto and like a manifesto per faculty and a group who's organizing um, communication and then we have to work on it now and then we can move forward far more quickly than we are doing now. You had an intermediate point, right? We'll take 20 minutes as well. Ik was voor 20 seconds, sorry. Ik ben Jitske Jaspers van Kunstgeschiedenis. And I'd like to stress two or three things. One, I agree on the groups. We should uh, get into action. Uh, and related to action is visibility. And if we stay in our classrooms or whatever we call them, we're not visible. We can talk to our students, discuss stuff with the students, but we need others to see what we are doing or are not doing. So I would say, thank you. I would say that we strikes not necessarily the way to go, but we should make ourselves visible. And relating to, we're sort of by striking, we would, we would hurt our students. I think coming from a family of teachers that my parents, looking back, uh, regret most that they did not ever go on strike yeah. <laughs> and exactly for yeah we don't want to hurt our kids yeah well they're hurt by the government so let's go on strike <laughs> okay i saw points here i think hi i'm christine johansson english literature um what we're not what hasn't been raised on this issue of the strike so far is exactly how it impacts teachers themselves so I will use a personal example about why I would hesitate to go on strike, even though I'm here today because I support what's happening. So I'm on a temporary contract, and not only am I on a temporary contract, I'm not, as you can hear, from the EU. So if there were legal ramifications for me, if I lost my job, then I also lose living here. And I go back to a non-job in America, which is not appealing to me. Um, <laughs> so I'm just... So in terms of supporting a strike or not supporting a strike, there's two concerns. And one is, you know, as we've been talking about, there's a lot of temporary staff here at the UFA. How does this impact them? How do the legal ramifications of a wildcat strike or a planned strike impact them? Um, and also, what does this do for people that choose to go on strike or not choose to go on strike? You know, we want to build solidarity. We want to maintain that solidarity. And I want to make sure that if I don't go on strike because I want to be able to feed myself next month, that, um, you know, that we still have a sense of solidarity amongst our colleagues who choose or not choose to go on a strike. Okay, first you, then you, then you. Or are you, you're standing for a long time. Okay, first you. All right, thank you. Um, Jana Comans, I'm uh, in the history department. Um, whether or not people want to strike, I think it's really important to go back to the point that it's at least convenient to know what you're striking or not striking for. So in the past uh, almost two hours, 
I find it almost frustrating There's, that it's very, it seems very hard to, to make any concrete points. And um, we're talking a lot about uh, structuring, restructuring, um, decentralization. In the past decade, I think there have been so many um, reformations. I think also many people are tired of restructuring. Um, so the question is, all those um, boards, advisories, committees that are already in place and, and which are people doing hard work and I think many people experience their work as extremely unrewarding. Do we still trust those organs? Do we want um, perhaps not only decentralization but also a simplification? And, and do we really, yes, I think that's the first step, do we really want to restructure and how? Maybe do a temperature, temperature check uh, on whether this should be on the agenda maybe, to discuss this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Totally off Okay. Okay, that's the six points I have here, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you have technical points? Okay, uh, related to that, I have a technical point because I'm a little bit worried. I see people are leaving and I think it's really important for the media or for the CVB to show that you teachers are all here and support the abstract, just in the abstract problems you support. So leave your email address or something like that before you leave so that we can, we have that. <laughs> a technical Good point. point. Temperature check on this, leave your email address. Yes, okay, great. Um, for now, let's move on. Another technical point first. Yeah. It's really taking a long time, so there's also people who need to leave. Maybe it's important to make follow-up appointment. When will be the next meeting? Will we all go to that uh, union meeting to discuss striking? Will, how do we contact each other? Next steps. So maybe you could do these practical things, just a date for a next meeting, and then go on with the discussion because people need to leave. See another technical point? I'm not sure whether it is a technical point, but one population that intermediate population between students and teachers here is the PhD community of the faculty. And that uh, community is not really represented in this discussion. And the PhD council of the <laughs> Faculty of Humanities is having a meeting to discuss uh, our support for this uh, on Tuesday at 4. You have all received emails, I hope. So please attend. I realize people's time uh, is, is, is limited, especially on such short notice, and I also feel like the discussion is getting, again, the theoretical, not uninteresting, but theoretical. Uh, and I, I'd like to, uh, not to overuse the term, get a temperature check on some very concrete uh, uh, ideas that we may or may not, or may not uh, share. So I want first to have a temperature check on whether that is okay that we move on to a suggestion, not only for me, obviously, uh, if that's okay. Good. Um, seems that it's, it's okay. Um, so I'd like to propose the following uh, bullet points for continued uh, action beyond what has been proposed here in terms of, or what's already been going on in terms of groups. The first is, and as already stated, go to change.org, sign the petition, uh, disseminate it as widely as possible, power in numbers. We need as many people from in and outside the university, students, teachers, etc., to sign that, tweet it, email it, do it. A. B. Follow, in general, I suggest that you divert traffic to the, the new university. It seems to me, and although there are points to discuss, points of tactics and points of philosophy, I think that the uh, new university has uh, created enough momentum for it as a website to sort of become a hub
for suggestions and activities and follow uh, that, tweet it, etc., etc. Again, create momentum and focus it there, even if you don't think that this is, speaks for you 100%. If your, your heart is there, go there. Three, I return, and it some goes back to what Yana, Yana just said. I think that it, it, simplification, at least in my uh, worldview, is return the power of uh, teaching back to the Opleidinger and return power of management to department forzators who are not separate uh, uh, from the work floor, certainly not separate by a degree of 100,000 euros uh, a year. So I think if there is a if there is one thing that I would like to state as a demand for reform at all levels, and I, I hope this applies to other faculties and institutions, is devolution beyond democratization. Devolution of power where it is necessary, where it is wanted by the people, back to department uh, chairs who know what's going on, who know their students, who see them every day and don't see them as numbers uh, on, a, on, a, on an Excel sheet. Um, so I, I guess one point of action derived from that is to ask us individually that we ask our department chairs, capacitates who, forzators, etc., to uh, jointly write. And I know some people have been working on it to uh, 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 go to their deans. In our case, to Frank Van Frey, but in other cases, as the case may be, go to the deans and tell them this is an absolute must. This is our demand. And this is what we live in, this is how we know how to work, and this is, in our experience, the best way to work at a research and teaching level without undermining interdisciplinary cooperation. So this would be my direct call to departmental forzators to do that now, to do that before Monday, so that especially the uh, forzators from FGV have the back of forzators from everywhere in, uh, at the university and hopefully, and hopefully beyond. Next point. Sorry. Question. Question. Um, can I, would you, I don't want to cause you any work, but would you be willing to, uh, the people you know as capaciteitsvoorzitters, to write them a sort of short notice that there will be a letter or something? Because it might all look really democratic from a, on a lower level, but I've noticed that uh, professors are usually only motivated when other professors write the letters and not when their temporary uh, colleagues do that. So I'll, I'll, I'll respond to that comment if it's made by a professor, okay? <laughs> uh, I, I think, uh, Mika, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, I think uh, James is already working on, on something like this. So it's in the works and I just want to encourage Forzitters here and basically everyone, email your Forzitters, make them, make them uh, do Maybe also and former everyone, just you know, create, create the, create the pressure. Referendum. I think this is something that, again, depending on the ideal of democracy that or the kind of democracy we want to be, I hope there is enough consensus that some things need to be put to a general referendum that should shape the policies at, uh, at every level. I think, and this I'm fielding. Th these are things that came up from the emails that were sent to Marcus uh, last night. I, we should have a vote, and this should be, I propose this as a demand. We should have a render, referendum on the following four items. A, all of the, what sh should there be a FUSI, and if there is, what kind of principles should be guiding it? B, should we rescind 884 at the faculty, or if to make a general point, you know, should the structure uh, of classes be determined at the uh, univer at the CBB level, at the faculty level or at the departmental uh, level. Uh, um, again, this is particularly relevant to FGV, but I think it's a general point about power at the departments and the opleiding. Um, three, this is the broad point we haven't discussed yet, the housing or rehousing uh, process. The whole issue which we haven't talked about, and it's not directly relevant here, but it is a central uh, plank in the new university's uh, ISER, namely the uh, UVA as a holding uh, uh, company. Is this something that, uh, uh, that we want? If we don't, how do we get out of it? It's something that we need to discuss, but not accept it. If we agree, it might be of great financial and political value to us. I'm totally open to that. But 
None of us have been consulted by it. It's a fact, and it's a fact that's detrimental, at any rate, hugely influential in our culture and in our finance structure, and I think we should have a say about it. And finally, uh, what do we want, and this perhaps goes, uh, should, should be discussed after the analysis of the governance of what, is, what kind of democracy we want. Um, yeah, what is the governance structure that we want? And there could be models, there could be propositions, but we should have a referendum about that by students and teachers to uh, have input on the, uh, after we have this analytical uh, discussion following from the works, uh, the analysis of, of, of the working group uh, that Holden is participating in. I, sorry, I know this was long, but I, I, I think these, are, these give a lot of uh, uh, some fuel or some concrete ideas on how to move forward. And if we can have a temperature check on these independently or, or jointly, perhaps a, a, a kind of ad hoc committee, or we can then go with this to the humanities rallies yeah. and to the new university right. and make a, uh, a joint uh, deliberation. Uh, just one yeah, technical thing. One technical point, Guy. Thank you very much. It's very, very, very lucid, very clear. And um, Fuji, don't call it a Fuji because this has already been rejected, even by the Safe Bay. They have been clever enough now to call it a sound American to an alliance, right? Let's see. So we have to call this, so it's a, they call it a bottom up approach right now between uh, the different institutes. I'm in the middle of that too, by the way, at the Faculty of Science. So call it the, the problem of the alliance between uh, the faculties of science at VU and UVA. All right. Uh... Rudolf's going to make a technical point, then I'm going to repeat the points, point out that they're similar to the demands with a couple of uh, addendums, and then have a temperature check on if people want to add something or if this is it and we're going to do it. A last point would be next meeting of this assembly on Wednesday at 5 o'clock. Um, do we want to have a temperature check on if we, do you want another meeting with all the teachers? Do we want this on Wednesday, five o'clock? No. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier, temperature check. Bring your hope. Bring your hope. So like uh, Wednesday at three o'clock. Wednesday at 8 o'clock. <laughs> this four. is not going to work. Maybe 4 o'clock. Four. 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 4. I think we're going to do Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Okay. I'm going to send an email as well. Yeah. And there will be an email. Good. Okay. So we're going to go over the demands and see if uh, you feel like something has to be added or if this is what we're going to work with. So, um, sorry, more technical points. <laughs> So uh, we don't think it has been said already, but of course there's been so much information and like we're excited but also overwhelmed. Like is there maybe going to be like an overview, somebody who's going to write up an email that's going to give an impression of like what this meeting was like and so we can share it with our colleague and uh, or with our colleagues and with our email list. We have uh, been taking notes. Uh, we will make this into uh, uh, one stunt and then send it to everyone that has put their email on this list. So if you haven't done that, do. A technical point now. Could we have a group hug after the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> These group hugs have been very effective in many ways, so stay for the group hug. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go over the demands and see what needs to be added. So, Possible strike, maybe not, maybe yes. Um, alternative classes and, inf and uh, informing your students in other ways. Sign the petition on change.org, share the petition and make sure many people, uh, many others share. Use your international uh, network for this so that we can add names to the list of Noam Chomsky and Judith Butler. <laughs> Uh, follow the new university on Facebook and um, post your own updates and solidarity statements up there. Return power to the faculties, to the departments, to the institutes. Um, communicate demands to the deans and the chairs. Uh, in this note, there will be a letter signed by professors to all the other professors and four sitters of some committees that I don't really get what it was about. Um, proposals for referenda on the alliance with the FU, 
on the 884 system, on the housing of the UFA, uh, on the new governance structure, and there will be a second meeting on Wednesday, 4 o'clock. Who wants, feels that something is missing and should be there? Um, I feel very much uh, that at the point return power to the department should be reformulated because I really don't like this return power to the department. It, re it reminds me to the power structure of departments about 20 years ago. Maybe it is possible to reformulate it and that, uh, of course, the students uh, miss, must take part in this uh, power structure of departments as well. This is the first point. The second point is I would like to have indeed something that the university is a place of research and uh, teaching, so maybe uh, explicitly that uh, both points are important. I don't see it in this uh, point. And the third thing is I really would be happy with that we teachers uh, maybe stop uh, talking about supporting the, the students, but that we are part of the students. Um, I think uh, some of the points you raised, they are on the demands of the new university now. And I think most of you agreed with the six demands, even though they're really broad and vague. So if you support that as well, it captures the emphasis on research and education. Something else that needs to be there. Um, I was just wondering, might it be a great idea to invite John uh, Favre right now, or perhaps for the next meeting or something? So we can discuss it with him. Temperature check. Invite Frank van Vrij. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him he's not invited me. <laughs> this point has been raised several times without a response in this room. On Monday, the new profile 2016 will be published, most likely. And we we need some sort of response to